Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, um, on behalf of my research team, I would like to thank the association for the invitation to, the, to present at our research at this prestigious prize session. There are 4 million surgical procedures performed annually in the United Kingdom with a mortality of 0.4 to 0.8% and a morbidity of 3 to 25%. 12% of these procedures are performed on people already branded as high-risk patients. These are responsible for 83% of the total post-operative mortality and length of hospital stay. Recently published epidemiological literature shows a link between surgical morbidity and reduced survival. However, the surgical, surgical literature is very poor at reporting morbidity. Major, a major challenge for us as surgeons is to identify the high-risk high surgical patient and optimize them to, get, to gain a good post-operative outcome. Almost two decades ago, Older and colleagues identified a low fitness uh, a low, uh, identified poor fitness um, determined from cardiopulmonary exercise testing, which is linked to poor outcome after a major surgical event. CPET is now, is now a non-invasive graded exercise challenge, which is performed on a cycle ergometer, as seen in the picture on the left. This allows the objective assessment of the cardiopulmonary function both at rest and under stress, mimicking the stress of a major surgical event. Physiological variables like the oxygen uptake at lactate threshold, which is determined as an increase in blood lactate when anaerobic metabolism supplements aerobic metabolism, can be determined during cardiopulmonary exercise testing and has been shown to identify the high risk patient. We therefore set out to test the hypothesis that CPET variables are related to short term in hospital morbidity in patients undergoing major colorectal surgery. We recruited 198 patients of which 184 underwent a CPET test at the median of 13 days before their surgery, 159 of which had major surgery. They were all uh, prospectively uh, followed up with using a validated post-operative morbidity survey at day, day five post-operatively, uh, of which we have 136 with a complete data set. All surgical teams and anesthetic teams were blinded to the CPET results. Our analysis plan, our primary outcome measure, was to establish the relationship between oxygen uptake at lactate threshold, or the anaerobic threshold as it is commonly known, and the post-operative outcome at day five. Other exploratory outcomes include establishing the relationship between other CPAD variables and post-operative complications, as well as using a multiple logistic regression model to evaluate the relationship between CPAD variables and post-operative complications. On analyzing results, we found that the patient's demographics are as expected in this patient cohort. This table shows a split between people with complications and without complications, 65% of which were male, a median age of 71, a mean BMI of 27, 38% uh, had a laparoscopic procedure, as well as 62 an open procedure, with 85% having an anastomosis. On the left, Complications were prospectively documented on day five using a post-operative morbidity survey published by Grocott and colleagues in 2007. This was all prospectively done. On, patients can score uh, in, in nine different categories um, and score more than once on each category. On the right, we can see a more traditional way of reporting complications with an anastomotic leak rate of 6.5% and an in-hospital mortality of two patients. This table shows CPET variables in our overall population. We can see a statistically significant difference in the oxygen consumption at lactate threshold and at peak, in ex in, 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 peak exercise between patients with and without a complication. Three patients were unable to attain lactate threshold and were excluded from further analysis. We have then plotted rock curves for each CPET variable to evaluate the ability of each variable to discriminate between patients with and without a complication. Oxygen uptake at lactate threshold and at peak produce a very similar rock curve with an area under the curve of 0.63, a cutoff of 10.1 mils per kilo per minute for lactate threshold and 16.7 for peak, both significantly related to five-day outcome. Rock curves for the ventilator equivalents for carbon dioxide give a similar area under the curve for lactate threshold and peak exercise with a cutoff of 32.9 and an area under the curve of 0.64, also statistically significant. We went on to consider six candidate variables for multiple logistic regression analysis. We, have, we performed a final model using gender, operation type, and oxygen consumption at lactate threshold. These variables were, were selected because they were the best 
variables that were found to accurately predict post-operative outcome and complication rate. Interestingly, we found that the odds of complication are around four and a half times for a male which compared to a female with the same operation type and the same lactate threshold. If the patient increases his or her oxygen uptake at lactate threshold by one mil per kilo per minute or one point change above the median of 10.6, we can see that there is a reduction in complication in the odds of complication by about 20%. If patients increase by two mils per kilo per minute or by two points, there's a reduction and there's an odds of complication reduction by 40%. This was found to be statistically significant. Furthermore, if a patient undergoes an open procedure, there's a trend towards more complication when compared to a laparoscopic procedure, but this didn't reach statistical significance. We have then used a rocker of analysis to evaluate the ability of our logistic regression model to discriminate between patients with and without a complication. The combination of gender, operation type, and oxygen consumption at lactate threshold combined was found, to give, was found to have the best relationship to day five outcome with an area under the curve of 0.73. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, we believe that candidate CPED variables are independently related to five day post operative morbidity. Gender, operation type, and oxygen consumption at lactate threshold combined are better able to accurately predict post operative morbidity. These data and the strength of the study is that these are unique, strongly clinically meaningful and attainable when considering the use of a prehabilitation program in major colorectal surgery. We have data showing that we can improve physical fitness by 22% or by 2.3 mils per kilo per minute in locally advanced rectal cancer patients, which is both clinically and statistically significant. And this suggests that we can reduce post-operative morbidity in this cohort of patients. We have recently been awarded an NIHR Research for Patient Benefit Grant to investigate the improvement in physical fitness and quality of life and the cohort of patients, which, can lead, which will lead to further studies looking at surgical morbidity as a primary outcome measure. I would like to thank several people for their help and dedication. Thank you very much for your attention.